So if you've missed the first video, uh, I built a plywood box out of some scrap plywood. And this plywood was used by my wife for art and it had um, a layer of oil-based clay on it, which, you know, I scraped it all off, but it's still impregnated. And I'm hoping that that will keep the, um, the epoxy from sticking. And I got some donated brown epoxy. I forget the specific uh, type of epoxy. Mix it up, paint it a few layers to the interior, and put a couple of layers of fiberglass cloth on the interior. And just wasn't happy with the way this stuff was setting. It must have been old. I don't know, somebody might have left the top off for months at a time or mixed the wrong thinner with it. I don't know what happened to this epoxy, but it never cured hard to my liking. So we got some different epoxy and uh, it worked perfectly laid up a bunch of layers of cloth put in some rigid fiberglass sheets as bracing glued that using the um, gray epoxy paint and put some more cloth over that and then we're ready to see if this thing won't break out of the mold all right this morning we're going to take the form off i think the sides are going to be okay i think the bottom's going to be kind of sketchy i don't know how well that first sheet of glass was wet out it was some real difficult glass to work with not to chop mat but we'll bang this thing apart and uh we'll see so shortly Okay, no big problems there. This is glass, and this is glass. Pretty rigid, I'm gonna keep going. So this plywood is 3 8 Luon. Um, it was some pretty decent plywood. It's been used on two previous art projects over the last, um, I don't know, many years. And um, so it has this embedded oil-based clay, and it was like the best separator ever. Even the crappy brown epoxy paint didn't even try to uh, stick to it. But now it's been officially retired and it had uh, found its way to the burn pile in Osaka and it is no more. So I won't be able to reuse this plywood anymore. Dang, looks pretty good. Okay, super happy with the way it came out. Um, I think it's strong enough just like it is. Now there are issues and I kind of knew it was gonna happen. There are areas where my first layer of glass was not um, wetting out good with, the, with the, the form basically had three layers of paint and I was trying to stick the glass to the paint. And it's just so difficult to work with. Really stiff mat, I, I kind of knew better. But I uh, just need to grind those out and patch them. Structurally, it doesn't affect anything because it's only the paint that's not adhering to the glass. The glass should be adhering to that layer afterwards. Um, but before I do that, I gotta get rid of all the oil-based clay because nothing's gonna stick to this oil-based clay. And then to make it worse, I sprayed it with a release agent, which I think is silicone. So. Somehow I gotta clean it up real good before I sand it because that's just gonna grind it into the areas I sand. I'm gonna clean it up and uh, patch these little corners. All right, scrubbed it down with paint thinner and soap and water and I think I got like 98% of the old base clay off of it and hopefully the form release. I'm gonna flip it over now and cut the edges. Um, they're really sharp and I'm tired of bleeding so that's, I'm gonna skip the uh, grinding on the outside and jump to the rim around the top and get it cut to size and sanded smooth so i don't bleed anymore okay the top sitting in place and centered and i scribed a pencil mark around the exterior all the way around and now i just need to move the top and go in the right distance for that little lip and cut it and sand it and put some paint on it um if you didn't watch the last video shame on you but uh this was a 
fuel tank cover uh, and the bottom of a little uh, runabout boat that I cut up. And uh, since it wasn't rotten, I just put it to the side and it's been sitting for a long, long time, but I found a use for it. And I actually built the tank to fit the top, so it wasn't a coincidence. I was playing with my little cutoffs here and seeing how strong they are. And they're pretty flexible, pretty tough. Um, it's hard to tell what breaks first. Um, I gotta believe it's the brown laminates, but uh, yeah, I don't have any problem with this strength testing. I think we're gonna be just fine. So I promised myself when I finish this fiberglass job, I would throw all this rest of this crap away. But you gotta keep a little bit, right? So I was right, the bond between the brown paint that I painted the inside of the mold with and the first layer of glass was pretty sad. Uh, and I was pretty confident that was gonna happen. So I came and chipped off all the loose pieces. I probably could have chipped until it all came off, but I got the loose pieces chipped off and I put some epoxy filler and I sanded it and I'm getting ready to put some gray paint on it. And on the corners here, I'm gonna put some glass this would be like a, a wear strip for just dragging it around in and out the truck and under the house. So um, give it a little, uh, a little more. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully. So when we start dragging it around, we won't chip up a bunch more of the brown paint. And it'll stay put. What's on there? So I'm going to mix up some paint and uh, roll it. It's pretty warm right now. It should be all right. All right. We got the ugly brown covered up. I got cloth around the perimeter and on the corners. So tomorrow I'll lightly sand this edge of the cloth. It was a, a seamed edge, so it doesn't lay down flat. And put one more coat on the outside and flip it over. The inside needs one more coat. I got the second coat on the bottom of the top. And I don't have anything on the top of the top yet. So yeah, hard part's done. It's just painting now. And I got the plumbing fixtures ordered. Um, hopefully they'll be here soon. I'm gonna put two uh, Two bulkhead fittings on this end. The one I'm going to use and a spare. Because when you got 60 gallons of poo-poo water and something goes wrong, you want redundancy. You want options. So I'll have some options. And with the flap wheel, I grinded all the gradu out of the inside of this little lip. Turned it up a little bit. Actually, I grind the whole thing so I can put a coat of epoxy on it. And Put me a little ease. I eased the corners on all this so I won't bleed anymore. Let's set the top on it and see how it fits. Actually, this little lip, this little lip that's going to fit on the outside of that flange is going to make it like super strong because the sides can't bow out because of that lip. So, uh, yeah, structurally, I'm super happy. Heck yeah, perfect. This is the Duraplate 6000 I'm mixing here and I'm reading off the um, cut sheet off the internet. It says Duraplate 6000 is 100% solids, high build, high strength, reinforced epoxy lining for concrete and steel in severe service environments with fast return to service times. Um, features, glass flake reinforced, hangs up to 125 mils, that's super thick single leg or plural component spray application long pot life extended 21 day recoat window return to service 10 hours extremely low permeability may be applied to saturated surface dry substrate um, all of that means so much i don't know 
recommended uses, severe wastewater immersion in headspace environments, sewer collection systems, wastewater treatment plants, industrial and wastewater tankage, suitable for use in USDA inspected food processing facilities. So, sounds like I got the right paint here. Um, kind of tricky to mix. Typically, I put the thicker component of any epoxy in the cup first, let it settle, and read what I have in ounces, and then adjust the thinner component, because uh, let's say you want to mix 10 ounces well sometimes by the time it settles you have 12 or you have 8 so adjust the other component um, pour it in there as best you can as accurately as you can and mix well so coating the top of the top does very little good other than just makes me feel better I did put the uh, flap disc with the grinder on it got all the loose paint on, off I have no idea what I'm painting over could be latex paint for all I know but I'm giving it a coat. Actually, I gave it two coats, so it uh, looks good. It'll never see the weather, and nobody will ever see it, but it's done. And the final, final, final coat on the bottom of the tank. Uh, give us a little, uh, some abrasion resistance. Uh, just added some millage. This stuff's real thick, so, uh, man, 100 mils, that's a, that's a hundredth of an inch, right? Anyway, lay this stuff on and it builds up pretty thick and it's fiber reinforced so it, it's all for the good. I got my one and a half inch plastic through holes. I'm going to put two of them on this end. And this is where I put embedded that thick piece of uh, fiberglass because I knew it needed to be real strong. They come with rubber gaskets. I'm not so sure about, well this is a plastic part. The rubber gaskets right there i'm not so sure about it i may uh, augment it with silicone and even if i put the thing as low as i can get it i'm going to be holding like an inch of liquid in here but the good thing is the ground under the trailer is sloped so i'll probably hold from like an inch to like nothing and that will eventually grit up so it's kind of scary here but i'm going to drill two big holes on two big holes with my new hole saw. Success. Drill the holes. I'm into that chamfer, so something's going on. Pretty thick material. Um, yeah, I got it down low, and the inside's not flat. I'm into that curve, so I'm going to have to probably booger up these things to make them work. Or, well, not too much. They seem to go in there pretty well cut a little bit of this outside plastic off that's the rubber that's the rubber and that's the plastic so I could trim the plastic back a little bit be all right but I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna put some silicone on here so with the bandsaw I cut this little bottom part off the plastic so that it wouldn't be catching on this uh, radius curve so um, then I wiped everything down with acetone and we're ready to put them in. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna back the rubber gasket off, put silicone under it, put the gasket back, put silicone everywhere, make a big old mess, and tighten up these left-handed nuts. Okay, I've got silicone behind the rubber. Silicone on this side of the rubber. Now we're going to coat the inside of the hole with silicone. Here. 
This is not rubber, this is plastic. think that'll do it I'm not sure why I need to over tighten it so my fittings came in the mail I got two um, inch and a half threaded valves I have two threaded nipples that will go in these bulkhead fittings on um, one of them I need to hook up my pump which is a one inch so I couldn't I couldn't find a schedule 80 bushing so I got some Home Depot bushings to go from, from inch and a half to inch and a quarter inch and a quarter one inch so Anyway, put these valves in right now. I can close them and set this on the ground, fill it up with water, and see if we have a leaky. All right, we're filling up with water to look for leaks. I don't anticipate any. I clamped a board here, a flush on this side. Just kind of curious to see how far the sides will lean out. And why did I need two discharges? I don't know. I need one. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Maybe I'll have another 112 and one 120. I don't know, but uh, it's easy enough now, and it would be very difficult later on after this thing is nasty. So I'll put two. I'm going to fill it up with water. should hold about 60 gallons. We are full. We are dry. And this side, or the two sides together, bowed out maybe an eighth of an inch. So that's a sixteenth inch on each side. I think that's very acceptable that means my top doesn't have to be structural so that gives me uh, flexibility on how I fasten it down I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that so this is good I need to work on the float switch and uh, <clears throat> get it set and adjusted tank is complete and it's on the scene but it's not going in yet <clears throat> it's gonna be 101 degrees in a little while and working under there on my hands and knees even though it's in the shade it's still 101 degrees so I'm gonna wait for a, a little more moderate temperature and hopefully I'll get Dave out here to help me too but uh yeah I don't have to do it right now because the temperature is so hot we're having like zero guests lately so you'll just wait very patient it'll wait until we get some more moderate temperatures so we'll end this video thanks for watching